Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to introduce the notion of application shell. We're going to learn exactly what an application shell is and why would we want to use it in our application. In the next few lessons we're going to learn how to implement an application shell using Angular Universal. The best way to understand exactly what an application shell is is to remind ourselves first what is the main reason why we are even using Angular Universal in our application. In order to do that, let's go ahead and launch in our terminal our Angular Universal live development server that we are going to start using the command npm run dev colon ssr. I'm now going to switch here to a larger window where we are going to explain the notion of an application shell. As you know, we are adding Angular Universal to our application in order to be able to provide to the user an initial HTML payload when the application is initially launched in the browser. The reason why we want that initial HTML payload is to be able to show to the user something quickly on the screen, giving to the user the perception that the application is up and running and that everything is working correctly. If we don't provide an initial HTML payload to the user with some visible content, the user might even think that the application is broken, it's unresponsive and it might even leave the page without loading the application. This effect is going to be much more noticeable on mobile over slow networks. With typical single page applications, we are serving an empty initial HTML page containing just the root tag of our application and with no content received from the server. So if we just display that page to the user, it's going to be a blank page. The user is not going to see anything on the screen and the user is going to have a poor perception of the performance of the application. It's going to think that the application is very slow and that it might even be broken. Imagine you, as an application user, having to wait for 5-10 seconds looking at a completely blank page waiting for an application to load. That's exactly the problem that we are trying to avoid by using Angular Universal. We use Angular Universal, which is a node-based Angular rendering engine, in order to prepare some HTML to the user upfront. That HTML is going to be displayed to the user and the user will perceive the application as up and running while in reality it's just plain static HTML that is getting displayed. On the background, the page is loading the JavaScript and CSS bundles that are going to activate the Angular application on the front end. The Angular application on the client side is then going to take over the page. The application that we have running here, because it's using the Angular Universal Live Development Server, is already being server-side rendered. So if we inspect here the initial HTML payload that we got from the server using here view page source, we are going to see that we have here a lot of HTML. Let's search here for the body tag. As we can see, we have here a ton of HTML to display to the user. Depending on the content of the page that we have server-side rendered, this could potentially be a lot of HTML that we have to send over the wire to the user. And therein lies the problem that an application shell is trying to solve. Maybe for certain situations, sending a full server-side rendered HTML payload to the user is too much for what we are trying to achieve. We are just trying to give to the user a quick indication that the application is working correctly and that it's starting up. We don't want to necessarily show to the user the complete content of the page. For example, in the concrete case of our application, maybe showing to the user just here the top menu of our application, plus a global loading indicator here spinning at the center of the screen, maybe that is sufficient in order for the user to perceive the application as correctly working and almost ready to be used. Remember, the goal is to show to the user some meaningful content as early as possible in order to indicate that the application is working correctly. And maybe showing all this HTML to the user is counterproductive for that goal, especially because a lot of the content that we have here is below the fold. So the user will not be able to see it anyway when it gets loaded onto the page 
without scrolling. So although we want to use server-side rendering in order to show to the user an initial payload, we might want to control exactly what parts of the page get server-side rendered or not in order to optimize the initial HTML payload that gets sent to the user. The HTML payload should have just enough HTML in order for the user to perceive the application as working, but it should not be so large that defeats that purpose. This amount of initial HTML that we want to send to the user might depend on the page that we are on. For example, here on the All Courses page, maybe we want to server-side the complete page initially as it's not a lot of content. But for example, here on the View Course page, maybe we just want to render this initial header of the course and we want to display here a loading indicator to the user or maybe we only want to render the first two or three lessons of the course and we lower the rest later when the front-end application starts up. If the course would have here a lot of entries, we might not want to send all of the lessons of the course on the initial HTML payload because again, the user would not even be able to see all of that information on the screen due to the need of scrolling. As you can see, with server-side rendering, we would like to have the ability for different pages to control exactly what gets server-side rendered or not, in order to optimize the initial payload of HTML sent to the user. And that notion of having a reduced version of the application that shows only a part of the content to the user, such as the top menu, maybe some part of the page here on the header and a loading indicator, that reduced HTML version of the application is called an application shell. An application shell is the minimal amount of HTML that we can send to the user at application startup time that will still give to the user the impression that the application is working correctly. In order to create an application shell, we need to somehow control on a per page basis which parts of the page get server-side rendered or not. We are going to see how can we implement that in Angular using a couple of auxiliary application shell directives that we are about to write. We're going to do that in the next couple of lessons.